Hey, what is up my fellow golf ball addicts? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are tackling the Callaway ERC, an updated review for the 2024 season. Let's dive in. Okay, so a lot of you have requested that I have, uh, that I redo the ERC review. Excuse me, just because the last time we did it, we didn't have a lot of success with it. Uh, it was still a brand new ball then. Callaway had just come out with it, and there was a lot of room for improvement. But I have heard from you guys that the new models are a lot better. They've made some improvements, and it looks like based on what I've seen on their website and my Golf Spy, you know, articles, things like that, that seems to be the case. So with that being said, I am excited to now go into it, retest it. Callaway's been doing some amazing things over the last couple years. Uh, so I'm excited to see if these improvements actually do help the golf ball at all. So let's go ahead and dive into the price point. So uh, this is a three piece kind of urethane ball. I'll get to more of that in a second, but it does come at a price point of $39.99. Now, the reason that's significant is like I just said, it's kind of a urethane ball, but not really. It actually has an iometer cover, but they use a proprietary blend urethane coating for the outside, you know, to improve with spin and durability, things like that. Um, a lot of companies now have started doing this proprietary blend is what they call it. Essentially, that's what it is. They're mixing. They're doing a blend of, you know, iometer and Serlin and trying to do like a hybrid opposed to back in the day, iometer was more of your cheap, more durable, but not a spinny cover. Now, you know, and urethane was more of your, you know, softer, spinnier, grippier cover. Now they've tried to blend these to save money and, and improve on technology and you get stuff like this. So I haven't been a super big fan of it, but hey, it's early in the process. They can get better, they can make improvements. So hopefully that's the case here. So $39.99, the reason I really don't like that price point is that's kind of getting into your basic like vice line. Like you can go to the grocery store and get and Vice golf balls, the Vice Pro, the Vice Air, the Vice you know, Pro Plus, and those golf balls are some of my favorites on the channel that I've tested so far, and that's the price point we're in. So now $39.99 for a golf ball that kind of has a proprietary blend, it might not spin as much. I'm already thinking, man, value-wise, I don't know if this golf ball can keep up, but let's go ahead and get into the design of the golf ball. Let's see how they did there. Callaway has an iconic logo. I love the old English-style font. Um, now, what's interesting is that that Callaway has all these different designs. I won't beat a dead horse here. I've talked about it many times now. I love what Callaway's done with their designs. They offer all kinds of different, you know, options for every different type of golfer. But what's interesting about this ERC is this is an alignment tool I've not seen them come out with. I've seen them have the triple track. I've seen them have the 360 triple track, the uh, Truvis picture. As you can see, you know, based on these pictures here, that's what it looks like. It is very unique, different. I don't know how it's going to work, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's going to be a great alignment tool or if it's going to be weird. It's interesting to see how it fades. So we'll definitely test that when we get out to the pitching and putting green. Um, but overall, you got to be impressed with the design. You really do. Uh, they offer so many different options for so many different golfers. Everything looks good here. It's one of the best designed golf balls out there. So let's get out to the chipping and putting green and let's see how it is around there. Yep, good strike. Oh, not bad. Oh, it's a little hot. That wasn't bad though, it actually had a pretty decent reaction. All right, this time I really want to focus on the feel. The first time felt pretty squishy. Oh yeah, it, wow. I mean, decent amount of reaction, it's okay, but the, the real story there is kind of just like the super soft. It's so hot off the club face. All right, one more time here, let's try to get one in. Yeah, again, a little bit of reaction there, but a pretty firm release. Um, it's a little bit better than the Super Soft for sure, but it's nowhere near like a lot of these tour balls I've been testing lately. Gonna open the face a little bit here, see if I can get. Oh, there we go, look at that. Nice strike, Put a little, open the face a little bit. All right, I'm gonna try closing the face now a little bit just to see if. Oh, wow, I did. I got a left reaction. So there is an average amount of spin for sure. It's not super spinny like some of the tour golf balls, but my goodness, I can get it to go left. I can get it to go right. Just really off the back foot, low, spinny. Yeah, I mean, it is possible to manipulate it to spin a little bit, but it's just kind of average. So the first thing I really want to do here is test out this alignment tool. It is an interesting alignment tool, this uh, 360 crossfade, what they call it. Let's see how it kind of looks. Oh, wow, that actually looks way better than I thought it would. Holy cow, I, I had no idea. Looks like a police, looks like a police light with the red and blue, but that's actually really cool. I did not expect it to show up quite like that. I hope you could see that on the camera. 
uh, because that was really good. I'm going to try it again here just to show you. Uh, wow. I mean, I, I just did not anticipate that. Yeah, I mean, you can just see it so well. That's super impressive. Uh, for an alignment tool, I really didn't think it would, it would provide that level of feedback whether or not you hit it straight or not, but boy, it did. As far as feels goes, it's very soft. Um, there is a click there for sure. I can definitely feel it, which with a mallet putter like this, a really thick mallet putter is not normally the case. Um, so there is some feedback, which I like. It has a pretty true roll. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very true roll. I would say like a nine out of 10. It's very, very good. It was, I would even call it excellent. Um, it seems like there's some good consistency here and I really can't get over the alignment tool. I know I'm an alignment tool snob and my, my longtime followers know that, but still just, this is so unique. I just haven't seen anything like this. That was slightly a miss hit. And as you can see, it ended up a little bit left. Really good. I, I love that. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and go to the mallet or the, the blade, excuse me. Got the blade here. Let's go ahead and try to get a good strike. Oh, perfect. Wow. Perfect. Look at the alignment tool. Woo, love it. Actually, it felt pretty good too. There was a little louder of a click, but it's only a notch up. You know, if, if the mallet putter is on volume two, this one's on volume three, you know what I mean? It's only one notch up. Not a super big difference, but I mean, again, it feels really soft, consistent. The roll is good. Not blowing me away, but it's just doing everything right, you know? Little soft click. Got a little too much on that one. Just didn't have time to hit the brake. All right, so if I had to describe the Callaway ERC soft, um, in one word, it would just be good. I mean, that's really how it felt around the green was good. Uh, as far as the feels with chips, uh, better than average, but not like eye popping. Uh, same thing with the spin, better than average, but not eye popping. Then you get into the putter, really good roll, good consistency, seems to be right there. There's a good, decent amount of feedback for being such a soft ball. A lot of the time with these soft ones, like the super soft, prime example, we just did the super soft really too squishy and honestly i just didn't get a lot of feedback when i was putting it now one thing i was really really impressed with was this alignment tool i know i touched on it a couple times i just had no idea seeing it roll like this would be so pleasing to the eye it's so easy to see that i get instant feedback to know whether or not i just misread the hole or if i miss hit the putt uh, that's really good for those golfers as well so that's probably the only thing that truly i popped me but everything else is just really good consistent all right, so real quick, touch on the feel with all the golf clubs. So I gotta say, this is one of those golf balls that if you hit it pure, it has a ton of bounce. It feels really good, it's pure. Even on miss hits, it still keeps that really good feel. If they're slight enough, once you get to where they're pretty bad miss hits, like losing 30, 40 yards miss hits, like I say, it's just a total flop of a swing. It's rough, it lets you know. There's definitely feedback, it feels yucky. I won't lie, it does. But anything in that general circle of an area of the middle of the club face feels pretty darn good. They did a really good job with it and it's definitely an improvement over the last model for sure. So uh, with that being said, let's just dive into these numbers now. Let's dive into uh, the 50 yard pitch and start there. Looking at backspin, of course, we are looking at 7,076 on your spin. That is lower than my average, but it's not bad by any means. Anything over the 7,000 mark is what I would look for. If it gets below that, it starts kind of being a disappointment. I have to start knocking off some serious points, but in the 7,000 range is perfectly fine. It's not gonna necessarily stop and rip back to you, but it's gonna stop. And hey, that's what a lot of us need. There's very few players that swing a golf club good enough to get a golf ball to rip back to them, mainly only pros. So overall, I'm really impressed with that. And then once you get to full swings, it does just fine on its own. So it's really that 50 yard pitch, but like I said, good, not great. 1.29 on your smash factor for the nine iron. Really good there, love to see that. I gained about six yards, 132.3, love to see that. 132.8, awesome. 101.5 on your ball mile per hour speed. That is really, really good, love to see it. And then 7,002 on your spin. Like I said, once you get to this point, the spin kind of evens itself out. Now something to note here is that I did get a low launch, 21.9. That is a low launch with the nine iron. Usually these soft golf balls want to launch a lot higher. Uh, not the case here. So that is something to keep an eye on for the remaining of the clubs we do is whether or not this golf ball is going to be a low launching golf ball because that does make a difference. So other than that though, really good numbers there. That's exactly how I would want a nine iron to start out. So far so good. Let's keep it going with the seven iron. 1.39 on your smash factor. Really good numbers there. That, that ties for the record for the best smash factor I've had. 
160.9 gained about six yards, 163.1 gained about seven yards, 114.5 really great ball speed, 5,366. Now that is a low spin. That that is not going to hold a green as well as some of the other golf balls I've tested. Uh, there's going to be a little roll after the fact, so you got to kind of keep that in mind. A little bit of a learning curve. And then as you can see, it did launch low at 17.3 again. So continues to launch low. You're going to be able to keep it out of the wind, which is really nice. Really, the only thing I see out of those seven iron numbers that is starting to kind of worry me is that spin. That's a really low spin number for a seven iron, and a lot of you really want that stopping power. I'm not huge on stopping power, but even with a seven iron, I don't want it to roll an extra yard or two. I want it to kind of stay on the green, depending on where the flag location is. So overall, still really great numbers, really great distance there. Let's keep it going with the five hybrid. 1.4 on your smash factor, uh, 1.40, excuse me, which is really, really good. Love to see that. 179.6 gained about three yards. 181.6 gained about two yards. 125.1, that's an excellent ball mile per hour speed. And then now actually the spin at 5,478, that's really good. That's above my average. Um, and then a 14.9 launch, which again is lower than my average, but I would like to comment on that. So the last video when I did the super soft, um, I had kind of mentioned how when I was hitting it with the hybrid, it just wanted to launch low every single time, 9, 10, 10, 9, launch angle, and I had to change my swing in order to actually get it to do what I wanted it to do. Not the case here. This was just me relaxing, hitting hybrid shots the way I normally would, and I got a really good launch angle from it. I'm actually just super impressed with those numbers. Again, they're not record-breaking, but they're extremely consistent. They do what they need to do. That's impressive. So let's go ahead and go into the driver. This can make or break it. 1.43. So, okay, maybe, maybe we're getting into a little bit of over compression here. We'll see. 221.9, 231.1, 139.8. So I did lose a little bit of ball mile per speed as well as distance. 2,457 on your spin is close to average. And it did again launch low at 14.3. So that does seem to be the case across all clubs. So, um, the driver numbers were the first time we actually just kind of got average, you know, just basic stuff. And if I had to guess, I would say that it's probably from over compression. The compression of this golf ball is around the low 70s. I don't know exactly what it is, but based on what I've read, it's around there, maybe high 60s. But it's going to be a little softer than your Chrome Soft, and I saw that, especially toward the end. The Chrome Soft, for me, jumps off the driver. This one is decent off the driver, but you can kind of tell I'm just starting to over compress it a little bit. And I did feel that. It's not much. I'd say I'm still getting 95% of it, but I'm just not getting that full 100%. So I would say probably swing speed wise, you could be looking 90. 90 would be a good swing speed. 92, 93, you're going to start over compressing it a little bit, but 98 like me, and you're, you're definitely losing 5% there. Real quick before I touch on the uh, closing thoughts, my conclusion, I do want to talk about the durability. Now looking at it, at first it looked really egregious, but I did kind of clean it up. You know, overall, if you can see, there are some scrapes, there's some scuffs. This is after about, you know, 70 shots. I'm not super impressed, and, and to be honest with you, what this really comes back to is this proprietary blend. I know all these companies like Titleist and Callaway and TaylorMade are all trying these proprietary blends to, to experiment, and I get it. There's going to be some, some uh, growing pains. There's going to be some learning opportunities, but I'm just not super impressed yet because, again, this is a $39.99 a golf ball. It is toward the expensive side when it comes to value tour balls, but the thing is is that I expect there to be decent durability, and that's just not the case. Um, feeling it, I can feel those scrapes. I, I would be worried about putting with this golf ball now. So that means probably after one round, you're going to have to toss it. I wouldn't trust it with its flight. I wouldn't trust it with its roll, especially after one round of using it. So again, not bad, but it's just okay. All right, so in conclusion, um, I, I got to say, Callaway made some serious improvements. I was not very happy with the, I think, 2121 or 2022 version. Wasn't my cup of tea. I really thought there was a lot of room for improvement, but Callaway has really been trying hard, you can tell, because there are a lot of positives to build off of here. Uh, performance with the clubs wise was amazing. I will say that the golf ball does launch low. This is gonna be a soft golf ball for people who want a low launch. And what's cool about that is there's not a lot of golf balls on the market that do that. Most of the time, if you get a low launching golf ball it's your Titleist AVX or your Wilson Triad or you know these tour level balls of guys who are swinging really fast 
I can't recall ever really playing too many soft golf balls, value tour that are you know softer compression that launch low like that. So it is kind of for a different market. Um, I personally prefer a little bit higher of a launch. I like that forgiveness getting up in the air, but there are a lot of you that probably prefer the AVX. And you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is I've seen so many of you ask, hey, I play the AVX, it's really firm. You're telling me it's not for me, what should I play? This is a real contender, it really is. It would save you some money off the AVX, $39.99 a dozen. It is really soft, but it has a low launch just like the AVX does. So that's the first thing that comes to mind for sure. All of you who've been asking, might be worth picking up a sleeve. If you happen to see a sleeve of them at a pro shop or whatever for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, give them a shot for sure because I thought that was really impressive. So other than that, you know, the numbers are good. There was nothing eye popping. It was really consistent. The ball forgave me really well, had a decent feel. You know, nothing's a 10 out of 10, but everything's at least a 7 or an 8 out of 10. So it's hard to argue with that. There's a lot to build on. They continue to make improvements. They'll probably come out with another one for the 2025 season. Um, and I'm really excited for that. I think they're on the right path. Again, what it really comes back to, though, is would I recommend you guys trying this golf ball if you're an average golfer, you've been trying the Vice line, you've been trying the Snell line? I don't know, probably not, because my big thing is, yes, I do like this golf ball. But when I think of a comparison to it, I immediately think of the Vice Pro Air. And that golf ball is like a 10 out of 10. It's like, it's, an, it's a nine and a half out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. And it's, it's actually the same price, $39.99. But if you buy them in bulk, you get them for $32.99. Um, but I think the durability is better. I think the numbers pop off the screen more. I like the feel more. I like the green side spin more. Again, we're talking marginally here. We're talking, you know, like, uh, you know, this is good, that's great, but still, for, for the price point, I think I would just stick with that. A lot of you have told me the air has been really, really good, and I think this still has just a little bit further to go before it gets into that realm. So, overall, really impressive. I'm glad what Callaway's doing, guys. As always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time.